Welcome to the Retire in Panama live Q&A with Oscar, Megan, Oscar, Rod, <laughs> Megan, and Oscar. <laughs> I should have started with that. And time. then you wonder what yeah. it was on that the gang, Rod. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our video looks good. Perfect. Yeah. And you see, I finally, people have been bugging me. I finally put a picture on the wall of my office. And that is lovely Panama City on black and white canvas. Yep. 1999 at Duke Center. I'm pretty proud of that piece of artwork. And <laughs> yeah, that's a bargain. That's a bargain. Yeah. So, anyways, what we're doing here tonight, we're going to answer as many questions as we can get through in the next hour and a half about Panama. Whether you want to move here, whether you want to, sorry, whether you want to retire here, whether you're younger and you're not retired and you want to move here, open a business here, get a job here, whatever you want to do. There's two ways you're going to be able to ask questions. The first way is when we open up, when we unmute you all, you can ask. Um, directly ask us a question, or you can type it into the chat. I see we've got questions coming in there already, which is great. And um, so anytime you think of a question, just so you don't forget it, feel free to type it in the chat. Oscar and Rod. Um, Rod. Or Rod. Rod. Do. Okay. As more people come on, we're going to keep muting you as we introduce ourselves and stuff. Uh, we've got a simple format today. We're going to do introductions. We're going to talk a little bit about the friendly nation stuff and changes, um, a little bit about uh, Panama's vaccination programs, COVID restrictions, what you need to do to get here, stuff like that. And then we're going to open up the Q&A for questions for all. So shall we start the introductions? Yes. yes. Okay. Who's going first? Ladies first. Ladies first. I'm always first. All right. So I am Megan. I am operations director, so I keep the tours running smoothly, um, do a lot of communication with you guys before the tour as well. <laughs> sure. I'm just checking the video. And um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and I went to Penn State University, majored in international development, and then immediately applied for the Peace Corps, which is how I found myself here in Panama and served for two years as a volunteer in Panama near Bopete, which is how I ended up meeting Oscar first and then Rod, of course, and um, I had a great time serving, worked in a lot of uh, different projects in English, environmental education, youth development, and learned a lot about Panamanian culture and Spanish, which I love to share with all of our guests on our tours. And so that was in 2018. Then in 2019, as of 2019, I joined on with these guys with Retire in Panama and now live here in Boquete and absolutely love it. So that's yeah. me. Yeah. That's me. I think that's AK Presita. Everything. Okay. Rob. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My name is Rod. I'm from originally from Vancouver, Canada. I moved here coming up 10 years. I was not a retiree. I was in, a, I had my own online business and I was tired of paying excessive amounts of taxes. And I looked at, I found Panama was a great place for people like me at the time. I was a digital nomad. So I came here. Um, I was one of these guys that packed my bags and bought a one way ticket and moved to Panama without ever being here. And it didn't work out that well in the beginning. I had some challenges and it just so happened that. I was looking for someone to help me do all this stuff, everything expats need once they move here. And I asked around town where I was staying and everyone gave me the same name, Oscar Pena, Oscar Pena. Uh, okay, I'm gonna phone up this god of a person, Oscar Pena, <laughs> and I did. And that's what happened, that, that, that's how we met. And so Oscar started helping me with little things with my vehicle registration, my driver's license, getting my immigration, stuff like that. We became good friends. Um, he had a business in town um, do, um, helping expats, basically, and doing local tourism. We ended up getting in business together, and with the, uh, we opened our own local tour operator and continued to serve expats on a private level, private one-on-one -on -one expat tours and helping people get all expats, get all the things done that they need to do. So then we had this brilliant idea um, about five years ago to start doing small group tours. It took us a couple of years to put it all together and decide, and we started doing small group tours. We did tours of eight to 12 people 
And we're not here to sell you a tour tonight. Although if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a 1-800 number you can call. <laughs> it's not there. Just kidding. Um, anyways, but call. <laughs> but, call. <laughs> but anyways, we're here to answer your answer your questions. And anyways, so been doing this now a long time, and we've helped many, many, many expats move to Panama. We I'm not to toot my, toot my own horn yet. Okay, we won't. We 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 know our stuff. We have fun doing it. Uh, we we do a tour every single month, and then in between the tours, we're doing many things for um, doing private tours, helping expect kids to driver's license, buying cars, importing pets, all, all that type of stuff. So anyways, that's my story. Oscar, it's your turn. Now I can get to talk. Ooh, and then you can talk. Anyways, bye. So, <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, I am Oscar Brenya. I am originally from Cali, Colombia. I moved to Panama in August 12, 2009. Prior to that, I lived in Costa Rica between 2006 and 2009. Uh, I was studying hotel and tourism management in Colombia. Uh, I was very driven by getting to learn all the culture. I, was, I grew up in a very big city for small world. I used to work in a mechanic garage for my family business. That's why I have some knowledge or some, some uh, yeah, you know, some stuff about some cars. Um, Got to Costa Rica, I started working and getting experience in a, in a very high-end uh, luxury resorts in the area of Manuel Antonio. Got to be highly trained at the American service. I got to learn my second language, which is this beautiful English, and that I don't speak 100%, you know, I still got my accent. Uh, but uh, that has allowed me very much to be uh, helpful to those that have been here and can be a struggle with the culture. I uh, also here in, in Panama have been involved uh, with different organizations. I used to be working as a volunteer coordinator and I am a volunteer of the Civil Defense of Panama, which is the organization that uh, checks all the natural disasters and emergency, like missing people, getting to search people that are lost in the jungle or the battle volcano. So that's my background, that's why I consider myself a little bit of mama goose when we do some of these excursions. Make sure everybody is safe and in one piece during the whole journey. Uh, besides that, I yeah, I, I got lucky to get to meet Rod. I got a blessed to get to meet uh, Megan. And this is a beautiful team that we have together. Um, I'm pretty much Jack for all the traits. So when you're when if you guys end up here, some of you end up here, some of you already have been with me. You can prove me wrong if you just if you say Oscar jump and I'll say how oh, high and that's it. That's how it is. I'm your driver, your bodyguard, um, uh, bartender, um, uh, translator, interpreter, whatever you need. So that's I'm here to make the transition with my excellent team because we all do an important part of this uh, process, not just to offer the information for you guys, but also to deliver the, the best or the most customized service once you hit Panama and you give us the opportunity to show us Panama and the culture. So here it is. Okay, all righty. So we're gonna begin this call a little different. We'll be in the Q&A within five minutes, guys. So I see the questions are starting to come through. Keep typing your questions until we have lots of them to answer. So we're gonna begin with two, two things. Number one is the changes to the Friendly Nations visa, which many of you have heard about. And for all of you people interested in pensionado visa, it's perfect. It's never changed, probably never will. So you don't have to worry about that. But there have been changes to the Friendly Nations visa announced. The deadline for applying is August the 6th. Um, if you don't apply by then, the simple method of opening a bank, a corporation and depositing $5,000 in a bank account will be gone. Now, there will only be two ways after August 6th to get a Friendly Nations visa. One is to get a job in Panama, and number two is to buy real estate in excess of, um, in excess of um, $200,000. Now, I'm trying to ask Mike to unmute, but my mouse isn't, there we go. There we go. And um, so I wanna introduce you guys to Michael Vitovich from Inside Panama Real Estate. Why I brought him on here today is because every, 
I, I see online all the time that there's this conspiracy group of realtors in Panama who have been lobbying the government for years to get rid of the friendly nations visa and do it their way. So I want to ask Mike, Mike, are you part of that conspiracy? Yeah. No, Rod, I, I, I didn't get invited to that party. You <laughs> never got invited. So honestly, to your knowledge, you've been in real estate in Panama for 13, 14 years. Does that right. exist? No, not, I mean, not to my knowledge, no. I, uh, maybe we'll, we'll have a short-term benefit from it, but uh, I think it was more labor-related. I think that all the friends pieces uh, that automatically come with a work permit uh, potentially puts a little bit of pressure on the Panamanian labor market, and they have a pretty strong labor union, so... I think that they're trying to preserve jobs for Panamanians, I guess, rightfully so, uh, to some degree. Yeah. So what you're saying is, like, like in your feelings, the changes to the Friendly Nations visa, we just went through, it's like the world, a crazy pandemic, unemployment rates are sky high, is more to preserve Panamanian jobs than anything else. I, that's that's just my take on it, uh, right? I don't have any, any official information, but like you, you kind of started off saying, the when, when Panama shut down, it's been over a year. So there's people that have been out of work for a long time. A lot of the places that shut down will likely not reopen. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of local Panamanians that are, are going to be uh, in a tight job market. Um, and, and as friendly nation visa people come and get work permits, that, that puts more pressure on, 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 the, uh, on the job market, in my opinion. Um, yeah. so, no, I can see that. I've been, we, we've been asking realtors, lawyers, and everything about this. Why are these changes now? Friendly nations have been around. Uh, it, it is what it is, folks. Um, but yeah. really, is there not many properties worth two hundred thousand dollars on the market to even make a difference with this? Like, if if, if people didn't have two hundred thousand dollars, do they have it now to buy a property? So, like, do you really see a big increase in sales from it? Well, I I think that there's there's more interest because uh, people who are going to come and buy anyway, uh, it, it kind of makes sense for them because it fast tracks it a little bit, but. Um, like here at the beach, obviously, 200000 you can buy a condo at the beach. Um, in, in Boquete, it's a, you know, it's a little more expensive unless you get out of, out of the core. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, uh, I think it's actually a good program. I, I, I like the program. There's a couple little things that uh, maybe they'll do amendments to later to make it more uh, flow smoother. Um, like they say, it must be financed by a bank. Well, it, that's easier said than done, as you know. Um, there's a lot of developers that are willing to finance, but that's not included in the program for now. That may be one of the things that we visit another time. Um, so there's just a couple of little things like that that um, will, will make it a really good program in time. Okay. Um, overall, Mike, what's the, your consensus on two things, rental availability in Panama? Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. If people want to come down here and on a pension or, or come down here for, for the new 18 month program, which we'll talk about later is 18 month stay visa. What's the rental situation like right now in Panama? Can they find a place reasonably? Well, or, uh, the short answer is years ago. Yeah, the short answer is yes. Um, it you know, of course, it depends on where and when. So high season, low season, and then if you're going to rent long term versus short term. Um, so there's there's some variables, uh, but here at the beach, definitely there's been a, there's been an uptick in um, activity. Lots and lots of Americans are are coming to Panama and 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 uh, North America, Canadians as well. Um, and uh, whatever's driving them politics or economics or whatever it is, there's lots of people coming and lots and lots of interest. So it is absorbing some of the inventory. Uh, so for the rentals, if you have a, a travel date, it'd be a good idea to reserve your spot now if you can. 
Uh, so that you're not screaming. A lot of the comments coming in around background about background noise. I'm I sorry. It's just in Mike's video. Yeah, they're... Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they're talking. It's not coming from um, elsewhere. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, at any rate, uh, no, as you know, tell you, Oscar and I believe. That's why not? I don't know. We can see you, but uh, you're not moving. <laughs> we can hear you. Making sure we're on the stable internet here. Okay. Okay, we're back. Mike, if you just said something, we all missed it. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I don't. I don't recall. I, you started to say something actually, and then you cut out. You said Oscar oh. and I believe. Yeah, Oscar and I believe in everyone doing research to get to Panama. There's tons of stuff available on the internet. Honestly, most of it's not any good. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I built it, I know, I'm not gonna say it. We have over a hundred blog articles on our website that tells the ins and outs of moving to Panama. So retiredinpanamatourist.com, check it out, search for the information that you needed. But Mike and his team has also put together this great ebook. And it's like 80 pages long, and it gives you all types of tips and tricks for people that are thinking of moving here. Things I like when I went through it, when you, like you had me kind of proof it for. I said, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. So this is good. And Mike would like each of you to have a copy, and it's only for the low, low price today of nothing. Awesome. We are giving it away. So I am putting an email. No, no, out I want her. something. I want something. Uh, oh, okay. Send, I want a smile. Yeah, send Oscar a dollar. No, <laughs> smile is enough. So I just put in the chat an email address. If you email that email address before midnight tonight, free ebook at ipreinfo.com. For you people on the phone, I will repeat that slower. Free ebook at ipreinfo.com. Mike will send you tomorrow a copy of this ebook. It's some great valued information to put in your folder, in your Panama folder for when you're doing your research. Um, anyways, um, so Mike's our go-to guy here in Panama with real, real estate and rentals offices across the uh, Thank you for your input on Friendly Nations Visa. You know, I'll give him a, a little bit of my input too. And then I know we're going to have a bunch of questions on that. In itself, we already have, which we're going to get to shortly. Yep. So, thanks for joining us, Mike. You can go back Thank to the you. now. I know you told me your company, but thanks for coming um, on the call, anyways, with us. Okay, guys, uh, like as, as Mike said, Friendly Nations Visa did take away some Panamanian jobs. Sure, it did. But one, one of the biggest things, it was a really easy visa to get. It, if basically, if you had $5,000 to your name, you could move to Panama and get a permanent resident. Well, what happened is a lot of people did, and then they weren't able to make money here. Either the business they tried failed or the, or the, they ran out of money and you know they didn't have health care coverage here, stuff like that. So what Panama has done instead, they have introduced a short-term stay visa. That's the official name. It's the most boring name I've ever heard. It's actually, I like to call it the digital nomad visa. If you can prove you have an income from outside of Panama, you can stay in Panama now for up to 18 months. That I, will, will that be renewable after 18 months? Well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But it's certainly, you know, and it's very inexpensive. It costs $300. You apply online. You don't need a lawyer. So um, there's more information. This was just announced last week. So there's more information coming. Uh, I don't even think the platform has been released online yet. But basically, if you can show that you have a $3,000 a month income based on your last year's tax returns, or whether you know, this could be income, maybe it's investment income, or you have an online business, or you're a stock trader, or you're, um, you know, work from home and teach English, I like, like whatever, or like, Zumba. yeah, yeah, or Zumba classes. Yeah. So if you can prove you can self sustain yourself in Panama, and if you swear an affidavit saying you won't work in Panama, uh, in, in a job situation where a Panamanian could work, you're going to be allowed to stay, you, you'll get an actual visa card, which will allow you to get a temporary driver's license and everything. So 
Um, it's going to be a great option for people to check out Panama to see if this is where they want to be and make a choice at a later time of uh, whether they want to apply for one of Panama's many visas. Friendly Nations wasn't the only visa. Uh, there are, you know, obviously there's the retirement visa, but if you're not receiving a pension, there are other options. If you want to know more options, yes, it's 3,000 US. I shouldn't be looking at the questions first. Um, yeah. If you want to find out many, uh, many options, please go to our website. We've got a contact form there, answer all your questions, or ask them right in the chat here, and we can discuss them. We should move on to a Q&A, guys. What do yes, you think? Yes, let's do it. What do you want, where do you want to start, maybe? Do you want to start with open questions, or the, do you want to start reviewing these? Well, yes. we got so, a lot of the, the questions on the chat. Over, that's your mouse over there. We have separate mouses. Oh, it's COVID time. Okay, Don't okay, touch okay. my mouse. Okay. <laughs> If anyone has an urgent question, feel free to open your mic. Otherwise, I will start looking through the questions. Yeah, if anyone's here. got a question, unmute yourself. I'm not going to unmute everyone. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, like the, this is Tom Vincent, Tom and Debbie. Hey, Tom. Um, there was a question about Pan has Panama started offering medical insurance for people over 64 and a half? We will both be over 65 when we join you for the tour in November. Uh, we're looking for some, if we decide to do this, it'll be a mid to late 2022 arrival. Um, is the option for medical insurance going to be good for us at that point? Um, yes, Panama already offers medical insurance for people over 65. The 65 cutout you're referring to is for a Panamanian local programs. There's nothing really to do with that or international health insurance. International health insurance, the cutoff is actually 75. And local plans for foreigners, there is no age limit. It goes right up to 100, in fact. And, but those are like co-pay type um, um, insurance policies. But the international plan for somebody in around 65 will be around 300 $350 a year, and it's 100% coverage. Like, there's no deductible, there's no copay, it, it, it's everything, and it covers you around the world. I shouldn't say no deductible. There's no deductible in Panama. There will be a deductible in the U.S., but it can be one, two, five thousand, 5000 depending on what you want, which will lower your premiums, of course. So there is medical coverage available to people in that age range. You just older, said it. You just said it was three hundred dollars a year. Is that absolute? Is that month. correct? No, a month. Okay, three, a month. Thank you. Three thousand to thirty-six. Sorry, thirty-six hundred to four thousand a year. That's what I thought. Okay, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, but then if you go with if you go with one of the local programs here with the local hospitals, it's about one hundred and twenty dollars a month. And then you pay 30% and they pay 70%. That's one of the other types of insurance available here. We'll be able, we'll, when we're on, when we're there with the tour, we'll be, be able to discuss this in further detail. Oh yeah, major detail. It's one of our biggest topics on the tour and you'll meet uh, with a health insurance expert on the tour also. You'll be able to meet with her as a, our, in our group of 10 people. Also, you can discuss with her privately after uh, with their own situation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. Hey, can, hey, can I ask you a question um, about uh, arrival at the airport in Panama? I'm a pensionado. I'll be arriving in a couple of weeks. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, I've, I'll, I'll produce my cedula, my passport. I understand there's a vaccination certificate, a health affidavit, and a COVID test result. Is it that one poor single uh, immigration officer who checks all of this, or who tells you know who, where where do you go through the uh, you know the approval or the the checking on all these? There must be what four or five different documents here. Yeah, no, it is, but but the health affidavit. If you don't know what it is, it's online. It's called Panama, Panama Digital Affidavit. Just Google it. It takes you right to the site. They're supposed to fill that out and they, and they send you a barcode, which I have yet to have somebody ask for. Yeah, no one is uh, currently asking for the digital But you still have to do it because they might ask you for it. So they're going to, uh, like when, when you arrive, if you're already a resident, there'll be a resident line for you. You just go to that line, give them your passport and your schedule. If they ask for your barcode, just have it on your phone ready. 
right before you go to the immigration line, that's where all of the nurses will be and they'll check your negative COVID test. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? You said that before you go into an immigration line, somebody will ask you for the COVID test result? It's all the same way. If you've come into Panama before, it's all it's right in the same direction. You're going towards immigration right before the immigration lines are the nurses, can't miss them. You, They won't let you miss them. You'll show them your negative COVID test. They'll check it. If it's within the 48 hours, you're good to go. Um, it needs to be, we always recommend antigen, the rapid antigen uh, nasal swab, um, because it's quickest and cheaper than the PCR, but PCR is accepted too. And they'll check that and then you'll go through immigration and then customs. When are, do they, when are you do they, do they operate like 24 hours a day or, you know, yeah. I mean, they catch the last flight coming in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when are you coming, Tom? Uh, let's see. Uh, Next week, about a week from now. Uh, actually, exactly a week from now. Okay, yeah. That's um, then that's the procedure. If, you, if you're coming later, uh, Panama has also announced their vaccination program, but not you, you know for for people uh, uh, people ask the question: If you're fully vaccinated, do you still need to get a negative test? As of today, yes. I'm hoping yes. by July they're going to have that in place, but they're just not there yet. There's too many partnerships involved in making that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, we are going to go to the chat questions and try to burn a few of those off and then we'll open the lines up again for more questions. Sure. Um, so I think this is kind of similar. Leon is coming on the July tour and says, besides my passport and COVID tests, what other documents are required? to enter Panama, which we pretty much just went over. The digital affidavit, if you're coming in July, I will be reaching out to you very soon um, to start coordinate, coordinating all of the preparation with you. So hold on, by next week, you'll be getting an email from, from me. And things are changing pretty, uh, pretty much in a, in a very good way here in Panama. So it's gonna be a lot better news. We got a message from Milton. Great Milton! Where's Milton? Is he, is he on? He's in one of these pages. Speak up, Milton. Okay, let's see. From Philip, do you have any advice on or perhaps access to reasonable fares to fly private from U.S. directly to David? Ooh. To allow us to travel with our five cats and dog when we make the final move to Boquete. Well, up. Uh Good. Okay, Phil, if you need to contact us directly, you know why? Because we got two other people wanting to do yep. that in the next two months. We need you guys, we need to get everyone together and do some share costing and get that cost down for you. So please go to our website, retireinpanamatours.com. Click on the contact button and send us that request. I have, we, we currently have two people that we're working with yes. doing the exact same thing you are. Maybe exactly. you guys could all get together and Maybe you can only come on one one happy jet or and, one Boeing. Yeah, and six dogs and, and a car. Six people. Yeah, in a car. Yeah, both in a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So contact us for sure. We we do have those connections, and we are and we have so many people doing it now because it's um, so many people are moving here, and a lot of people don't want to go to the hassle of bringing their pets. So. Yeah. By the way, hola Lucy. Nice to see you, Lucy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, next question. So, you know what? I just unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. And hi, Ramona. I just unmuted myself. Yeah, hi. And we were in Panama a couple of years ago, and we want to go back and go, and we will spend about a week up in Bogota. But I'm also looking, and, and now you're telling me there's some tours, and I would just like to know what the itinerary is because maybe we would, on the front end or the end of it, we would join one of your tours. So how do I find out about that information? Okay, we honestly did not pay Ramona to come on here <laughs> and, and have us at, talk about our tours, but there is $20 in the mail coming to you, Ramona. Oscar, <laughs> okay, not. well, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Oscar, let's talk about our itinerary, what we did. All right, well... First of all, we got to show you, we pick you up in Panama City at uh, the International Airport to Cumin. He arrived on the pickup date. 
Uh, we do a start before in the city. Oh, whoa, that came out funny. <laughs> uh, Friday, we do a, a city tour. So we got to show you all the highlights of the city, which is the Panama Canal. Uh, right now, we still, uh, the, the visitor center to Miraflores is still closed, but we still get to go to the Pedro Miguel to see some of the locks, get to see some of the ships passing through the canal. We got to see some of the look downs, lookouts, uh, like an America's lookout. We go to the uh, Causeway, we go to all the main areas of the city that you will find very appealing and also to learn about the history of Panama itself. Uh, we, we have a beautiful evening in a nice restaurant in a downtown city with Italian food. It is delicious. Okay, that's day one. We have that's day one. one. Sorry, I just got too excited. You got too excited about this. Yeah, I got too excited. Hey, come on, we yeah, got three minutes. Give me time. All right. So the next day, we woke up at four in the morning. Just kidding. Uh, we got. We're not this. trying to be rude to you. I, I don't mean to be rude, but we already had spent nine days. Um, in November, during all the festivals, yes, so we've oh, done a lot of that, and now I want to come in for a second excursion. Okay. So maybe I can reach out to you later to see what yes. you would rec recommend. Because we also we also we can do is uh, custom our private tour for you if you want to see a specific oh. place since you already have been here. Because oh. what we do, we go to Panama City, we go to Coronado. We go to Pedasi, Chitre, and we spend one night in, in Las Lajas, and then we end up okay. here in Boquete, Chiriqui. But if there is other places that you really feel stronger, different places, we definitely can make it happen for you. Okay, well, great. I'll reach out to you. Yes. And when we were there in November was when they had the big festivals, you know, the... Uh -huh. um, from Independence holidays. Right, yeah, from Colombia and, and yeah. all of that, and then the other thing. And it was and we stayed at the plaza, the main plaza downtown. Okay. The old city. Okay. And it, it was fantastic. So I want to accent my next trip. And so I I'll reach out to you personally. Yeah. Person. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Working for you. And yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful country and, um, and Bogota is amazing. So, oh, uh -huh. uh, so, but you have a website, so I'll just go to that, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. for you guys that are interested in the tours, retire in Panama tours.com. We actually wait, 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 say that again, please. Retire in Panama tours.com. All right. Seven. In the chat. Megan is going to write it down. You can go. And under tours, we only have one spot for a couple left this year, though. So if oh. it, it, it's in September. Uh, we got a couple spots for singles, but for a couple, there's only one spot okay, left. Okay, in September. Well, that could work, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do a short, personalized tour, we can uh, make that happen. Yeah, yeah. We can, on private tours, we can squeeze the end. But on our group tours, there's only one spot left. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So retire in Panama. Yeah. It's just in the bottom of the chat. If you want to look at it to you. There's a oh, I gotcha. Okay. Got it. Thank you. You're very Perfect. welcome. Okay. All righty. So our next question in the chat is from Kay Johnson. Um, says that private health insurance is often quoted as $100 for a 50 year old, $300 for a 65 year old. How expensive is coverage for a 70 to 80 year old? Yeah, so 75 is the cutoff uh, for international health insurance in Panama. Um, I shouldn't say in Panama, in most of the world because these are international companies selling health insurance in Panama. So until you're, you're if you hit your 75th birthday, you can no longer enroll. So, but at that age, if you're able to enroll before your 75th birthday, you're looking at about $5,000 a year at 75. That's when the rates stop going up. They only go up with, with inflationary numbers, like the 1% or 2% thing. So you're, you're right. I, I was paying $104 when I was 53. And now I'm paying 150 and I'm 57. So when I'm 65, I'll be paying close to 300. And then when I'm 75, I'll be paying close to like 420. 
if I stay with that type of health insurance. What a lot of people do once they hit that age and they don't travel a lot more, they no longer need international coverage. They switch to something more local and obviously more affordable if it's just local insurance. Okay, next. Yeah, Re says that, Re, I'm not sure if that's her, he or she, but is 45, wants to know if there's a younger expat community. No, most of them are really old, like these two. Yeah, come on. Yeah. I'm an expat. She's an expat. Re is a she. Re is a she. And she hey. is looking to retire nice and early, um, hey. hopefully somewhere warm. So looking to do, there's another comment further down, whether or not you guys have combo tours with Belize and Costa Rica as well to do an extended uh, winter romance with myself <laughs> um but yeah 45 so when i'm thinking expat i often think of a little bit of more older retirees but definitely wondering if there are younger areas that have like uh tennis and yoga and all the good stuff happening absolutely yep. especially in boquete bocas and panama city i yep. would say is the younger even though Pedacito. Yeah, Tennessee is a smaller expat community, a little bit slower pace, not as much going on, but definitely. But they, there's they, younger, there's yes. surfing, and there's yoga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the second place you said after Boquete in between Panama City? Bocas del Toro are the islands north of Boquete. On the um, Caribbean side. They're definitely for the more adventurous. There's not as many amenities there, but there's a lot of young adventurous expats that go out to Bocas. Thank you. Uh huh. But other than that, Boquete is very popular. Panama City, of course. And you're right, Panama City yeah. too is a growing yeah. expat community. Yeah, in different ages. Our company is not focused solely <laughs> on retirees. Uh, we've had groups this year where the average age was below 55. Uh, we have we've had people on the tours from 38 to 82. Yeah. But we, we, we help people out with everything, whether you're, if you're going to retire here, we can help you with that. If you want to open a business here, we can help you with that. If you work want to remotely. get a job here and work remotely, we can help. Well, all of us can give you an idea, whether it's going to might look good or not for you. It depends on the type of business you want. Yeah, and and then we have that age difference from, you know, uh, late 20s to mid, sorry. I, early 40s. Hey, 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 hey. Early, hey. 40s to I'm just gonna be 41 to tomorrow. Come on, take yeah, it easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's your birthday tomorrow. At the end of the call, we're all gonna sing happy birthday <laughs> on Zoom. This is being recorded too. This could be a first. May, may, I, I, may I ask one more question? And yeah. that is, you know, we spent uh three weeks, we went to um Pan or two weeks, two and a half weeks, um to Panama, um up to Bogota, into Bogus. Love the whole trip. So now going back, yeah. is there any, and I love planning trips, is there any um, reason I should look at Colombia as like a, a drop-in yeah. spot for a few days and then come up to Panama City? And Well, I mean, I mean, as a Colombian, I'll tell you, Colombia is a, is a place, it's a great place to go traveling. Depends on your city, depends where you want to go, what you want to experience. I can tell you right now, go here, go there. Um, it is a country that is right now, I must do, I have to be honest, right now, the past month, we're going to we're deal with some stressful situation with a, with a massive uh, protest in the country. They're not very happy with the government, but that's that's the situation. Then it's not new for us, oh, sadly. We hope to be getting better in the next month. Um, but other than that, the tourist, from the tourist perspective, it is a fun place to go. There is an instability uh, for expats because when you're in Colombia, you're going to spend it in pesos versus dollars, which is make it complicated to understand, but you can get more further with the dollars, with the US dollars in Colombia. Uh, beautiful cities, uh, very affordable and depends where you want to go what you want to experience you can send an email too i can advise you we all we, sometimes i do tours to colombia but not to retire more like 
you know, the fun spot. The like vaca a vacation tour. Vacation yeah. tours. Yeah, he does them. Like you get to know, get to see the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Colombia. I've been there four times to, to the big cities. It's, it, it's a great place to go. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's all I need to know. Thank you. I'll check it out. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Next question we have from George. When you buy real estate to qualify for the visa, does the property have to be registered in your own name or can you buy it in the name of a corporation or foundation? Under the new Friendly Nations visa, the property has to be, rent, uh, uh, has to be registered in your personal name. Will that change? Possibly. Like, really, uh, I, I think this Friendly Nations visa is going to have a bunch of amendments to it yeah. over the next six months. But currently, the way the law is written, the property has to be titled. It cannot be ROP. And it must be registered in your personal name, not a corporation or foundation. Well, which will save actually money for the corporation. And oh, I for sure. But if you're buying a company out of a corporation, it's going to have to be removed and put into a personal name. Okay. So then you're going to spend more money. Yeah. But yeah. But really, the the, the reason for buying a a a property in a foundation has kind of gone away in Panama in the last twenty years. A lot of lawyers and realtors aren't even recommending it. Just buy it under your personal name. That's it. You know, there's some benefits to it, but not as much as there was 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, Oscar. What? Oscar. Yes. Hi, this is Isa. Hey, can you go back, please, to the program for when we come in for the tour? Go back to that day-by-day -day activities. Yes, sure. Um, so, do uh, you want to know from the beginning? We, 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 you went through day one. Let's go through day two, day three, day four. All right. All right. All you right. were cut off, so I want to just make sure you're. Uh, we could yeah. hear you. Do, do you got? You got to. You got to hear the first the day one. Yes. All right. I'm gonna go jump to number two. Day two. Okay. So day two, we wake up early. We leave to Coronado. We expect to be in Coronado around 10 and 30 a.m. to get to see a few, few spots like Corgona and the Coronado area. Uh, we got to have lunch in the club uh, or a very nice restaurant in the same area. We got to meet some uh, really good folks or expats. They have been done with us or people that have been living in the area. Uh, what else? We also, after that, after lunch, we start heading all the way to Chitre. We spent a very fair amount of time in Coronado to use to see what it is out there. We got to see some chances to see a option that you can rent or buy in Coronado. And then around two after lunch, around two or 3 p.m., we go to, uh, to Chitre. We're gonna spend the night. We do always a uh, very easy drive uh, to Chitre. We spend the night there. And that's pretty much day two. Day three, we go in the morning uh, to explore Las Tablas. We go past to Guadalé. We have to do interaction, a like very nice cultural interaction and, uh, and uh, with the Panamanian family and that in Pedasi, have lunch, explore the area in Pedasi. And the following day, that's when we take off from the Asuero Peninsula all the way to Chiriqui to the Las Lajas Beach. That day we chill. We learn about Las Lajas, we learn about the area, about basically it's a nice afternoon to enjoy one of the best beaches in Panama. Then the next day, on Tuesday, we head our way to our hometown, Boquete. We pass through David, we pass through Rod's area, which is Dolega, and we end up in Boquete. We got to have a beautiful meeting with all the experts that, that work with us. We get to have lunch in a nice restaurant. We get to see more of Boquete. We go to the Tuesday market. And then we have a beautiful evening, a nice dinner. Next day, we focus again on Boquete to see more of the outside town, more of the other options, because Boquete is one of the main areas that offer a lot of the options for living and amenities for potential aspects moving here. And the next day, well, and then we take your set and sound back to the airport. Hopefully you're coming back either to visit, to try it out. And that's it. Thank you so that's, much. That's a, very, that's a very quick resume, but it is really fun. Awesome. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we're looking forward to having you guys. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, Megan, next question. Yeah, from Peggy. She would like to know what months are the high season here? Uh, basically, 
the, in the Panamanian standards, I mean, this it has been changing a little bit with the pandemic situation, but normally it is November is extremely high season because the Panamanian holidays. It depends on from Spain, depends from Colombia. Then December is slow at the beginning, but it gets very active after Christmas. Christmas, New Year's Eve, it gets very, very high season. Then it starts uh, pretty much through January, February. February mostly because the Jazz and Blues Festival and other activities. There is also uh, uh, no school and the, the educational system in Panama. So it's a high season for everybody. And pretty much all the way through March is the high season, November through March. So November for local tourism here among Panamanians, and then through to mid-March typically. Mm -hmm. Mid-December through mid-March is school vacation for the kids. It's also dry season. So yes. in summer, everybody goes to the beach, there's festivals, there's dances, and it's also when the snowbirds come down. Yeah. So that yes. makes it a very busy time of year. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. snowbirds, they, they start coming in November. Okay, I'm gonna answer Ken's question. I'm reading ahead. Um, Ken asks, is the internet connection good to be book at the area to work online? Uh, that's what I did for a living when I came here, Ken. If I didn't have internet, I didn't make any money. And my entire business was online and I moved here in 2011. And that's how I did it. So now people, I had this question on the phone call today from, from a guest and I, I almost laugh now. The internet in Panama, and a lot of the Panamanians don't understand when I say this, is as good if not better than the US. And I know that for a fact. Um, I ran a business in the U.S. from 2012 to 2017. We had offices in Las Vegas and Austin. I had internet in two apartments and two businesses, and it was crap. It was only overpaid for it. It was slow. It was sluggish at five o'clock. We have fiber optic in Panama throughout the country. If you're within a few miles of the main roads and stuff like that, you'll have access with, with competitive countries of companies up to a thousand megabit um, speeds it's crazy you guys actually saw what happened here on the call where we lost you for about 10 seconds and as an internet marketer i can tell you what the internet is good it's our infrastructure that's not 100 percent best so i lost internet on my main service provider there but i have a backup and that backup my main service provider cost me 35 dollars for 200 megs my backup is um, $15 for um, 20 minutes. And the Zoom automatically switched to the backup and we didn't lose anybody because, it, and then I switched it back after to the major one because it came back online. So even if you do work online to deal with power failures, to deal with you know infrastructure problems, you just get a second internet connection. So my internet, 250 megs together, cost me $50 a month. So it's affordable and it's fast. And if you have two, you're looking at 99.9% reliability. That's a good stat. Mm -hmm. There we go. I got a question if you don't mind. Sure. Oscar. Yeah. Did you wear that shirt I gave you or you're scared? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. Man. Oh, man. man. Hey, Patrick. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> I, I, you know, when I want to feel badass, sorry for my language, uh, I wear that. Good. Hey, I, got... I give them a really hard time though. Yeah. But hey, I'm going to do, I'm doing, I've been doing full ups, putting a 20 pound chain on my, on my, on my wrist. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it when I see it. The old man beat you. Hey, I, got, <laughs> I got a couple other things. Do you guys have connections? Because we're going to come down there in August or September again for a nice. to check out deeper in Pettacy. So if yeah. you have anybody down there you could recommend or to show us or wherever to yes. any info. I guess we, we'll WhatsApp you and you can send us some stuff. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Are you going to be looking for a short-term housing or something there? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a guy down there now. So and, and yeah. well, One other thing, just to all the people that are listening that have been down there, trust these people. They are incredible. They show you everything. Oscar's a little shaky, but Megan, she carries it all the way. <laughs> but no, they're okay, great man. people out there. You, if you have any hesitation. I saw that I came from heart. I really came from heart. 
Okay, you're <laughs> so when I went there, I I went there with minimum expectations and it was way beyond anything I expected. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so you, man. much, guys. Thank you, man. Your twenty dollars is also in the mail. Ronnie, <laughs> <laughs> you told me twenty five on the phone. <laughs> See this seeing you guys. I would love to add to that. It's Janine and Paul in Colorado. And as somebody who has not been on the tour, you know, I'm sitting here laughing and nodding and you would think that I've been on 10 of your tours because like you guys are like family to us. Um, those of you who don't know, Paul and I are, um, we bought land this year in Puerto Armuelles and we've been along for this ride for the last year just to learn a whole bunch of stuff. And we've had incredible resources from these folks, um, even though we didn't go on the tour because we had already found where we wanted, okay? And, and it was somewhere else. Um, but all the places they're taking you are amazing and the resources they have to offer are amazing. And you'll see some of our resources in the, in the chat bar and some of our questions. But we just want to say, we did it, man, we did it. We were coming down to work in design with an architect to build our house. And these three are largely part of it. And a lot of the other people sharing their stories here are part of it. So yay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. I just wanted to say, like, you know, that's what we said from the beginning. Whether you come on our tour, like, we're honestly almost sold out for a year. So we're not here to sell you tours. If you want to come, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen somehow. But if you, you're just coming to Panama, we're, we're here to help you. And most of the stuff, if you send us an email or give us a WhatsApp, and we're going to tell you the truth. We're not going to say, oh, if you buy this from us, then we'll answer. No, no. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to, here to help you out. In the beginning, like, you know, both Oscar and I, we're, we're both expats. I know a lot of people think Oscar is Latino. He's from Panama. No, he's an expat. He's a Colombian expat living in Panama. I'm a Canadian expat living in Panama. The U.S. expat living in Panama. As a matter of fact, we, we, I, we, we've been through this. Let yeah. us answer your question. Well, let me tell you, as a Colombian, I, got a, I had a really harder to get residency here than North oh, Americans. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I know all in and out, and that's why yeah. we're good for this job. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah. even if, and especially if you decide Boquete is the place for you, we're happy to get a cup of coffee with you. Anytime. Yes. Yep. Anytime. Right on. Okay, let's carry on. We got many more questions. We're going to open up the lines to hear the people who haven't typed in the chat, but it's nice not hearing the background noise. That's why we're just going with, my, <laughs> with all these chat questions. Well, since we were talking about internet, yeah. Um, Ken says that his wife consults online for U.S. companies. Mm -hmm. Do they have to pay Panamanian tax for that kind of work? Okay, Panama. Let's let's talk about the structure of taxation. There's four types. Number one is we're going to tax tax you based on your citizenship. That's the United States of America. You go. Then number two, the taxation type is taxation by residency, which is about 180 countries. Of, out of like in the world, like the majority. You're, you're taxed based on the residency that you're claiming. Then the third taxation type is tax is territorial tax systems. There are only 12 countries in the world, which Panama is one. Panama, Costa Rica, Singapore are, are some other examples. So that means is you only pay income tax on money derived from Panamanian sources. So if you are a permanent resident of Panama and you open up a business on the internet consulting for U.S. and Canadian companies and you make a million dollars a year, you don't pay taxes to Panama. None. Zero. Zero. Because, but if you start consulting to Panamanian companies, you have to pay tax on that. So a lot of people, like, like I do, um, I did consulting work and online work for um, uh, mostly websites, marketing, stuff like that. And I have clients in North America. I also have clients in Panama. Well, on the Panamanian ones must be included in my um, Panama taxes, but the North American ones are not. So I hope that kind of understands it. Um, if you go to our blog and to search the word tax haven, I don't like using that, but I wrote an article and I made a disclaimer in the first line of the article, you'll read it. The article's entitled, Is Panama a Tax Haven? And but to some, it actually is. Because me, as a Canadian, I, when I moved here and became a permanent resident, I no longer had to have to file Canadian taxes. 
So I actually, my online business, which was all North American clients, became basically, in a sense, tax-free. That's why digital nomads, online traders, cryptocurrency guys love it in Panama because all that income is derived from non-Panamanian sources and they don't have to pay tax on it. But if for those of you that are U.S. citizen, you owe them taxes for life. Deal with it. But you do get $110,000 foreign resident tax exemption annually per, per person. So that is a big benefit for people moving down here. It's a, good, so, a chunk. It, it's a huge chunk. So you can make your first $110,000 of earned income tax-free if you become a permanent resident of Panama and you're no longer a permanent resident of the U.S. That's a fair deal, fair trade, I'll say. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a question about the new friendly nations changes from Bitly. Is it realistic if we start the friendly nations process this week, will the application be submitted before the August deadline? Yes. Okay. And this is, I'm going to be very open and blunt with everyone here because I'm sure there's a few of you. I've, 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 I've talked to a few of you, I looked through the names. If you're thinking about getting grandfathered in of the old friendly nations, you need to start this process in the next seven to 10 days in Panama. We don't, right now it's taking Panama banks up to three weeks to approve an account. You need the bank account for your corporation before you can submit the application. So you need to submit this application by the 5th of August because the 6th is the last day. Now, if you can imagine how many applications, it's in the thousands right now. So what happens if the government says, moves that data ahead by a week? They have every right to, this is Panama, things change. What happens if the bank say, hey, we don't want to open up any more accounts um, without this requirement? You don't know that. That's why you need to get, and you need to be here to do it. You can't open up a bank account online. You can't open up, like you gotta be in person. So you need to get this stuff done. Um, the, the stuff you need to get from home, if you get yourself a good lawyer, you're not gonna have an issue getting in a week. You can get an FBI background check in how many days does it take for yours? Less year? than a week. Yeah, three days right now, three to five days. You, can, you need a, to download your marriage certificate from the digital registry of files. I can't think of the name of, of, of the place. You need to get your, together your last two years tax returns. Um, th these are simple things you can get. Then find yourself a lawyer. We're not gonna recommend any on this call, I'm sorry. Um, the lawyers we deal personally with are, are swamped and they are extremely reputable lawyers and will not take another client on if they don't think they can get the, the work done. Uh, because they got so many people doing it right now and they need to make sure that their friendly nation, that their pension customers are still looked after in a timely fashion. But there are lawyers I see online still saying where they're taking applications, but be careful because if something happens that you come all the way down here, get all your paperwork, give your lawyer a big fat retainer and the bank says, oh no, we're going to take a month to get your, to, um, get your account open, you could be out that money. Like we're being honest with you here. There's risk here. Yeah. Is it worth the risk? Possibly, depending on your situation. But that's for you to decide. We can't help you make that decision. I'm just laying out the facts for you. Fair enough. So yeah, if you came here next week, yes, you shouldn't have a problem getting it done. Okay. okay we've got 25 new messages. Okay. <laughs> Rod with the real talk. Okay. Moving on to Ken. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, that was just me. Oh, my okay. personal comment. The real thing. Hey, I need more coffee. Real talk with Rod. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, from Ken. Um, talking about stable internet and David and Boquete. I think we covered that for you. It's mm -hmm. pretty stable. Um, how tenable is it to rent in Panama for six months during cold USA months? That's from Peggy. It kind of depends where you want to go. Um, Coronado is very popular for snowbirds, so those rentals will um, get taken up pretty quick. But yeah. it, I, especially right now, well, right now is not an issue during COVID times. It, 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 it costs more because you know, the U.S. and North America's cold months are our high season. Yeah. 
So you will pay a little more. A six month rental in Coronado in the high season might be $1,800. That same rental could be $1,400 in the low season. So you will pay- More for a year yeah, long yeah. lease. So you will pay a little premium, but definitely a lot of people, a lot of Canadians, uh, you know, as you guys probably know, I'm a Canadian, but a lot of Canadians rent here for six months at a time. Even here in Bukete, we got snowboard here. Yep. Lots. The guys who make the best deals are, are you are you guys from Florida that you stay in Florida from um, um, during the winter time then you come here during the summer time. Summer. <laughs> yeah. Then you get the best deals on both sides. <laughs> what did I miss? You missed. Oh no, we were just talking about you. You didn't miss. The oh, one. you don't want to. So we're talking about good stuff. Yeah. Giving them the dirt on Oscar. <laughs> Columbia. Could you suggest an insurance company? I, I, I keep I'm sorry, I'm, I, I keep reading the questions. Please please email us on that one. Last time I gave out a referral for an insurance company, they told they said, don't do that on your calls, Rod. We got hundreds of people calling us. This, this video will be seen hundreds, if not a thousand times on YouTube. So we don't like to give out the people we're referring. So go to our website, retireinpanamatumors.com. There's a special section if you look on the menu for health insurance and you fill out this little questionnaire and we'll connect you with who we feel would be the best for your age group, stuff like that. Mary wanted to know if you need any type of visa just to visit Panama on the tour. Just the tourist visa. You yeah, don't yeah. have to do anything special for it. Yes, yeah, there are 130 countries in the world that can come to Panama on a, on a 180 day tourist visa. Some yeah. are just 90 days. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's 180. Some are 90. Some even um, people like Cuban nationals who are residents of um, the United States or Korean nationals, residents of the United States, can come through on their passports. Yep. Um, so if you have any, if you have something, if you're from the United States, Canada, Great Britain, and Europe, and any of those countries, you have 180 days. If you're from a specific country that you question, send us an email and we'll tell you what the exact law is for your country. This, yep. this is Norm. Can I ask a question? You sure. can, Norm. Yeah. Okay. I have my dual citizenship, Panama. I don't oh. have a passport. You don't have what? A passport. Okay. I don't have and uh, do I have to come to Panama to get my passport, my Panamanian yeah. passport? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you'll have to appear here. You'll need to probably get a lawyer too. Get a lawyer uh, because uh, you need to make sure you have your, I your ID, your birth certificate. Once you have that, you just go to the passport office and get it. Yeah. Do you do you have your cedula? Is your cedula yeah. current? Yes, I do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Herman said essentially yeah. then then you you just need to come down here and go yeah. to the tri tribunal yeah. probably. No, yeah. there's the passport office in yeah. Panama City or David, and you get it the same day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay. you, have to be there. Mm -hmm. you know, I would like to uh, obtain citizenship for my son. Mm -hmm. And I understand I can do that. I guess he has to come too, I would assume. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, but that is possible because he's, you as a Panamanian citizen, uh, your first blood line, like your son or daughter or you know, first blood kids, uh, they will have the right to become citizens as well, or residents. That's good, thank you. You're no very problem. welcome. And if you decide to adopt me, Norm, maybe I can get my passport easier too. <laughs> It'll be $20. Okay, no problem. <laughs> you, you got $20 coming your way too. Send Norm $20. <laughs> right no. In 1967, I drove from Maryland to Panama. No, no way. And it was quite an adventure. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, crazy. Yeah. Awesome. Rod, okay. you'll get your citizenship just fine, though. I will. You'll I need to know a little more. Anthem. Yeah, I got to learn to sing the national anthem in Spanish. You can spell as ah. Yeah, yeah, I can't even spell no, Puerto 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 yeah. <laughs> I can't even spell Puerto Muelles. Okay, let's move on. Many more questions. Sure. All righty. Next question is from iPhone. What if you want the supplement, want to supplement your retirement from, want to the supplement your retirement from income to pay for the maid? Can you do that on Pensionado? Do you understand that? 
Well, I think they're they're asking if they want to they want to supplement their income on on a pension natal visa. Can you work on a pension natal visa? Okay. If you want to work online, yes, you don't need a work permit to work online. Uh, but if you want to make crafts in your kitchen and sell them at the market, do you technically need a work visa? Yes. You notice I say technically, but we're not going to advise you to do something against Panama law. So uh, a lot of people that you see in our markets and stuff like that have their work visas. So can you get a work visa with a pension adult? Yes. Is it easy? No. It has to be for specific reasons. There was a law passed in 2019 um, that allows pension adult um, people to apply for a work visa under these under certain requirements. But if you're just talking about supplementing your retirement income, like I said, work online, you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to physically manufacture product or make product and sell product, you need to be careful. We have a hand raised. Did you want to expand on your question? Can we hear you? I don't, oh, ask to unmute. There we go. There you go. There you are. What's your name? Oh, I'm sorry, your microphone's not working. Oh, we can't hear you. Hey, Rod, this is Tom Moody. Yeah, hey, Tom. Okay, I, my question is for everybody. It's the next one down about Miami and the pets. Sure. Everything I've read, um, it seems to say that people are moving their pets through Miami, but we're in Denver. How is Houston for doing those kind of things? Yeah, it's not, um, Tom. Um, Houston is only United and they have a moratorium on pets right now. So no pets are flying out of Houston. Um, Denver, um, I haven't checked lately when Copa Airlines is putting that Denver flight back on, but Copa used to have a direct flight five days a week out of Denver. And they would okay. take Well, we won't be doing the pet thing for another year and a half. Is this oh. a COVID related deal? Yes. Um, yeah, Copa Airline used to fly direct out of, out of Denver, and, and they don't have all their flights back on, but they will by the end of this this year, they say. So okay. you'll, you know, you'll be able to fly direct, and we are the pet experts. Okay. Uh, um, you know, especially uh, with people that come on the tour, we do it for them for free. Uh, if you're not on, if for you people that are not on the tour, we are the best price out there. We got two options. We handle all your paperwork for you for, for one fee. And the second option is we'll actually be at the airport to pick you up and take you wherever you're going. Well, so, we'll be on the tour. I, I no, want to no, ask, an, but yeah, I want to like, ask one more question. Tour, you and I will work together after the tour on moving your pet. There's no additional cost for you. Okay. I, I, I want to ask one more question. It's a little weird. Okay. I'm in the electronics manufacturing business. And I have one client that this is where my girlfriend's going to kill me because she wants me to retire. But I have one one client that I build uh, medical parts assemblies for, and I do it out of my house. I would to bring that stuff in from overseas. I would have to go to the free trade zone down in David, and in order to get a place in the free trade zone, I'd probably have to have a friendly nations visa. Correct. Well, there's a free trade zone in Cologne and one uh, in Fron Frontiera on the um, Costa Rican border, um, Pasa Canoas. There, right. There's nothing in the town of David itself, but it's about an hour outside of Debbie. Um, But to just import product, it's, it's like if you're running a business, but are you thinking of shipping product from Panama around the world? Well, no, here's the deal. My client is in California. Product comes in from Asia. I do final assembly on these, and it's a small batch of stuff, not big. DHL handles it right now, and then I ship it to California. Yeah. So the stuff would have to come in from Asia to a free trade zone. I would spend a week doing what I do to it and then ship it up to California. It would not stay in Panama. Well, that's something that... That's a question for you to send me directly, Tom, and me to get the Got right it. answer for you. Because I think you can sit on that in that free trade zone office without a work permit because you're not in Panama. Yep. 
But okay. I, I, I wanted to check with our lawyer to make sure I'm correct on that. Yeah. And, and again, Teresa would prefer that I not work. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll see, Teresa. <laughs> I don't think he, it doesn't sound like you're going to stop this guy. Teresa, <laughs> mail 20 bucks. We'll make it happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Send us 20 bucks. Uh, I'll ignore oh, Tom, no. I'll, I'll ignore Tom's email for twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right, next question. Next question for Oscar. For me, what's that? Daryl wants to know if our tour is offered in English and Spanish. Yes, we do. However, um, if we have had in our past uh, um, somebody who speaks only Spanish and very uh, mi minimum English. The tour is, is basically in English because that's my majority of our group. We can uh, translate, but the tour, it is in English. And that's unfairness because there is so much information we need to give. There will be very hard on me on Megan to translate the whole tour one-on-one -on -one in Spanish and English. So the tour will be done in English, but our expertise or because we are bilingual, we can uh, translate for every single of our guests during the experience in Panama to find out, figure out what's going on out there, what's going on in interaction with the locals, what, uh, what the people will struggle to order something. That's what we come in. But the tour is being held in English. Okay. Perfect. Hey guys, we got 15 minutes left. Uh, oh about 30 some questions. Rapid fire. We need to go boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, here we go. Where are we starting from? From Tom. Okay. Are there cycling shops in Coronado and Boquete? Uh, Coronado, yes. Boquete, no, but I can get you the content. David, there is, huh? Yes, but yeah. I can get you real good content. George, do you think the international airport near Rio Hato will eventually get commercial flights as well as charters? Yeah, who knows? Uh, <laughs> but no, 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 yet. Yeah. Okay. Next. Tom, what time will there be a need to be in this tour? There's the tour, um, the, the tour, tour group day be... is on the Thursday, Tom. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking to you a long time before the tour anyways. All right. Next. Yeah, we answered this one, online businesses, US-based, you can yeah. do them out of Panama. Are there any combo tours with Belize and or Costa Rica? No. No, we... but we highly suggest that you check out the countries on your own. We've had many people do. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we will show you the best of Panama and let someone else show you the best of Belize and Costa Rica. Then yep. you have an informed decision. Uh, Janine's asking if the Vita Tech lab in David is reliable for the rapid antigen test. Uh, we use the one in San Francisco in Panama City and we know it's reliable. Haven't used the David one, but it's the same. Yeah, um, yeah, we have it done here in Boquete. Mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, we've had good great experience. But if it's the same brand, yeah, it should work. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. We did great with the one in San Francisco. It's just we're not certain if that'll work out for our timing of departure. So we figured we'd check in if you knew anything about David. But they recommend that they're both the same. So thanks. Yeah. Beautiful. You can also do the two hospitals in David too. Yep. They, they got yeah. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, I really love the San Francisco neighborhood. It's beautiful. We had a great time there. We'll probably go back there. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Nice. Um, we have a question about from Philip about currency. I think she's a little confused as Bolivar or he, Bolivar is direct, our, huh? our currency is the Balboa. Yeah, which Bo is Bolivar is Venezuela. the currency is in Venezuela. We're yeah. not, nothing really like regardless Venezuela. So here is a Balboa. Balboa. And the Balboa is equal to the dollar, the US dollar. So only what it means is just the wording or the symbol in the stores, but it's dollars, US dollars. She yeah. says if the U.S. dollar is negatively impacted in the near future, would there be um, have any advantages over the dollar? Would the Balboa have any advantages, or would it sink? Well, the it, 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 you know, Panama has, has got himself in a good position. We do have our own currency. <laughs> our currency is not the U.S. dollar. It's like Oscar said, it's the Balboa. We have Balboa coins up to one dollar, and then we buy old U.S. Treasury notes to circulate as our paper money. But at any time, if something were to happen, um, we could um, switch over to the Balboa. So, uh, in the Balboa, we adopt probably another coin. It will be the most stronger. Uh, this is Phil. Perhaps I can expand on my question. Uh, we're going to be selling our home in Florida in order to be able to purchase a home in Boquete. 
And yes. of course, we're going to need to park the money in a bank in Boketi until we find the final residence. My concern yes. is if we park U.S. dollars in our bank in Boketi and there is an exchange problem because the dollar has some issues, uh, which I won't get into. Uh, my question is, can the bank then accept my funds in their account as the Balboa or would it be in the form of a dollar? I'm trying yes. to see if I would yeah, to no. insulate that asset. Currently, banks in Panama use U.S. dollar. Your yeah. account will be in U.S. dollar funds. So that pretty much about exchange will be a speculation, which is the only difference is for that kind of money you're going to be earning five percent interest in banking. Yeah, you get more money. <laughs> so that's 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 a good situation with their banking in Panama. Mm -hmm. uh, for Mindy, we use Biomedica Lab in Boquete. If you want to get your rapid antigen test down there, it's forty dollars. Results in two three hours. It's right next to Multibank, Mindy. Next to Multibank, Mindy. Yeah. What else? Yes. We're going through fast. We are. Yeah, well, we can open the line into the last 10 minutes. Rod, or, we have a request for you to set up or do a blog on your internet setup, your backup internet Oh, that's stuff. a great idea. We, we, we not only have, I, I've seen some of these calls. I'm not going to mention our competitor companies, but the power goes off. And oh, sorry, the, you know, their call ended after 10 minutes last night because the power go off. We got 24 hours backup in this room, two internet services. We won't be going anywhere soon if the power goes Not off. Not wood, but we're very prepared. <laughs> okay, I'll be watching for your blog, Rod. There we go. Okay, we have a question from Ken. This is a common question we get. What is the main reason people would retire to Panama but leave after a few years? Great question. Many things. Let's like, each answer that one. There well, no in my opinion, it can be it can be uh, a family situation. It can be just uh, folks realize they want to be close to the grandchildren, or, or just uh, situation changes in their lives or opportunity come up back home. It's so many varieties can happen. Um, a lot of people to come here and they say, "I want to come here and just spend my last days," and they end up doing it. A lot of people they just come here expecting to have the rest of their lives, but there's something changes in the four or three years with family matters or just they just decide and well after five years they miss home. And that's totally understandable. They're ready to check out a different country. Or maybe they just don't even want to go back home. They want to check out some other country. I we have even friends they have moved here to Boquete from United States and they thought Panama was it. That's it. They cycled with Panama. They didn't move back. They went back, they went down, some of them to Ecuador, some of them went to Colombia. In my opinion, the three most common things I see is either they didn't do the research, yes, they, or they thought they did the research. They looked online, researched online for months and months, but never did a, a trial run visit, just moved their whole life down here without visiting first and figured, found out, oh my gosh, this isn't what I read online. This isn't what I expected. No. And freak out after a few weeks or a few months and, and move back. Or they've lived here for a long time, loved it, but miss their family, miss their kids, their grandkids, or have health issues and feel more comfortable getting treated back in North America. Okay. Wow. Yeah. My answer is, that was a good answer. Yeah. Mine's right. a little shorter than both of yours. It's life, folks. Yes. Life consists of illnesses. Life consists of divorce. Life, like many things happen down in Panama here. The same thing as they happen in your home country. Yeah. And, you know, that's usually the backhand reason of it. So. Yeah. But uh, sadly, sadly, one of the, the bad reasons why people leave too soon is because what Mega said in the beginning, they didn't do the They didn't research, understand, yeah. And they just was sold the idea of Panama, a wrong idea. And they thought they were coming just another town of the United States, broad property, broad stuff. Oh. And they realized this is not oh. Kansas anymore. Which one? Could I'm, 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 I'm reading ahead. Got a question from Alex. Any chance of the curfews and mass mandates being listed in the next 30 days? I'm going to say no to that, in my opinion. But for any of you guys, I don't know how many of you have read the, the Bloomberg article or watched the Bloomberg video about Panama. If you haven't, type in Bloomberg Panama vaccinations and, and you'll find it. Um, Panama's uh, Minister of Foreign Trade was in New York last Thursday 
Uh, they made a deal with Pfizer for 5 million dosages to be shipped in three weeks. Panama's goal right now is to be the first Latin American country with, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Immunity. No. Oh, the, the, I, I, I still struggle oh, with that okay, word. Yeah. Immunidad, rebaño in Spanish, but I, she knows. Yeah. Panama wants to be fully vaccinated, 80% of its population by September 15th. And we can we will ready. have the dosages to do it, and we'll, we, we'll be the first country in the Americas to achieve herd immunity, possibly. If you watch, if you listen, read the article or watch the, the Bloomberg video, we could be ahead of the US on this one. Because 80% of the population have already agreed to be vaccinated. We just haven't been able to acquire, not for lack of money like many Latin American countries, it's just that. Pfizer and AstraZeneca and Johnson Johnson haven't fulfilled their commitments to us. Well, part of so, that team, right? Yes. We, Oscar and I got our first shot a week ago, waiting for the second shot in three weeks. Megan doesn't qualify yet, but soon. I know. So uh, anyways, like Oscar and I said in our video, we believe vaccination is a personal choice. It this is. Was our, 100%. This was our personal choice. Um, so um, we don't need any comments on it and stuff like that, and we won't comment on your your personal choices either. But I believe if Panama reaches that herd immunity by September fifteenth, um, then you're going to see the mass of you know the lifting of everything, which I believe is we're pretty excited about. Uh, we do, you know, obviously on the tour have to wear masks. We don't in the vehicle because we're private transportation but you do everywhere outside. And I'm just used to it now. Like me, it doesn't even bother me in the slightest bit. But anyways. Yeah. You, know, you know what is funny? As you're wearing a mask, if you're in the public, you might not, you might actually be uh, safe to get anything, even dust. Sometimes well, anything can get you a, a cold or anything. I don't have to shave. I can eat a poppy seed That's bagel true. and not worry, be worried about everything stuck in my teeth. You, know? you can eat fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody has to no, smell yeah. your breath. Yeah, that's it. Or garlic. There, there's uh, yeah. benefits to masks. Okay. God loves the masks. Yeah. <laughs> Personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. <laughs> Who's got a question? Oh, we've been reading questions, guys. I will go through the question chat. There's going to be a recap email sent out tomorrow morning with a recording of this. Because on these calls, we had, I think it was 85 at the peak here. 200 people registered, but people don't always show up. So I always send an email after with the recording of the call and answer any missed questions that we had. And that lets you also reply um, if, if there's anything else that we missed. But if anyone wants to ask a question right now as we wind this thing down, please. Yeah, Rod. Right. Questions. Okay. Who is that? Uh, Rod? Yes. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Ken. Um, just to follow up, one of the reasons why people might leave is it because of health insurance coverage? Like if you were gonna turn 76 right now, what yeah. would you do? Well, no, you like if you're going to turn 76, no, you could not purchase international healthcare. But if you moved here when you were 55 and nobody explained the healthcare system and the cost to you, and when you reach 76, you're now paying $5,000 each, maybe you can't afford it. And so, yes, that's one of the reasons. Right. Because okay. they weren't told the truth up front. Thank What's you. What's your plan? Now, my my plan, um, that's 20 years from now, but <laughs> my plan will probably be what a lot of people do. I will reduce my coverage from an international plan to go with a co-op type plan here, but it all depends on my health too. If I develop a whole bunch of diseases that need looking after, I got to keep my insurance, which I don't plan on that happening. So yes, um, healthcare is a reason for that. And it's mostly the people that, that were unaware that they weren't going to be able to afford it. And they made the decision to move here because they didn't know. And hey, Rod, question for you. Yeah. Uh, how easy is it to transfer money from bank to bank? And is there any fees association? How long does it take? A wire transfer, if you wire transfer direct uh, with no intermediate bank, it'll take two to three hours. There's a fee on both ends. Um, the fee on the U.S. end, it depends on your bank. And the fee on this end is between $20 and $40. Depending okay. on mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I've got a question. My name is Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Hi. Did you already uh, cover, you? I thought I heard you say something about an 18-month visa? Yes. 
There was a new program introduced last week. It's called the uh, Extended Stay Visa. Currently, you're only allowed to stay in Panama for 180 days or six months, approximately six months as a visitor. With this visa, which you can apply for online, I can't even give you the website address now because it doesn't exist. So hopefully by July, they have it. For a fee of $300, you can apply to stay here for and get a nine month visa and then renew it for another $200 for another nine months, which will give you a temporary residency card which will allow you, uh, which I assume, allow you to get a temporary driver's license so you can continue to drive a vehicle here because your license expires after 30, uh, 90 days here. And it'll just allow you to stay in Panama for that long. Will it be renewable? We don't even know I that yet. I it will. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will assume it will. But it'll certainly give you the option to say, okay, I like Panama, I want to move here, yeah. now what are my options? Yep. So it, it, it doesn't push you into buying that $200 real estate that the, the friendly nations want to do, which you know we're not going to, You know, Mike knows, Mike was on this call, and he knows on our tour, we don't push real estate. We want people to rent here for six months to a year to make sure you actually like it. Very easy to buy a house, not that easy to sell one, but um, yeah. So does that kind of answer your question, Daryl? Yes, like, yes, that, that's more. very good. Yeah, if you want to uh, be kept, kept updated, make sure you're getting our emails. And uh, yeah, if you're on this, you're probably getting our emails. And we'll keep you updated as that visa rolls along. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have another question uh, very quickly. Um, well, it's two part actually. Okay, um, do you have any idea uh, what the population is there as far as uh, U.S. veterans is concerned? I, I know that uh, we had military bases there at one point, mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering about the retirees or the uh, or vets. Veteran, military well, I don't know about population, but there are VA outfits all over. Yes, there's there VA is. There is a uh, VA hospitals. It's definitely a presence here in Panama. Um, I will say. It's noticeable. I, I will yeah. not. I, I cannot guess the number, but it's more than a thousand, probably. Probably, yes. Easily. So it is a not noticeable amount of, of veterans, of U.S. veterans here in Panama. Not that I'm a, a huge. Not that I'm a huge Facebook fan, but there are specific groups on Facebook that cater right to Panama veterans. Yeah. So if you search those groups out and join them, especially in the area, what's the Volcani one called? Huh. You got right. I know we have some contacts here. Yeah. Well, I, I do it. have veterans friends. Yeah. They, they live here in Boquete, so I'll be more than happy to ask them. If you send us an email, we please. can connect you if you're yeah. interested. Send, us an, with send us an email or we'll connect you to the ones we know. Because you have some benefits here too. Yes. There, there, there are some, um, well, especially for people on TRICARE and stuff like that. There are TRICARE hospitals here. Uh, there are VA pharmacies here. So. There, there I've done a lot of research on that. Um, the other part that I had was uh, I actually prosecute cases for uh, veterans as mm -hmm. far as uh, helping them to get their benefits. Oh, yeah. And um, <clears throat> I know that there's an, there, there's an organization there that helps the veterans. But uh, my question is this. Since my business is a U.S.-based business and I plan to go there to Panama on the pensionado visa, visa mm -hmm. um, I perform a service that I don't think that Panamanians are performing. Uh, is that something where, I mean, is that like a something where I would be tax exempt or would I have to, can I even work with a pensionado visa? If you earn money from Panamanian sources, you need a work visa. And it doesn't matter whether that Panamanian source is me or Megan or Oscar, like it, it like, let's say you charge a service to a permanent resident in Panama who's not Panamanian, but they're a permanent resident, you're earning money in Panama. Oh, okay. But you might qualify with the pension animal for one of those visas because, uh, for one of those work visas, because the work visas are issued for jobs that Panamanians can't do. Yeah. And that sounds to me like a job that a Panamanian couldn't do. Yeah. Right because you would have those contacts in the English side of it. But if your service is also provided to those in the United States no, and non Panamanians, I would yeah. say, I mean, you're in the clear. Yeah, if you're doing a service online and through your like Zoom and meeting with people back in the States, working with them, 
And yeah, that's not an issue. But when you start dealing with people who are living in Panama as residents and collecting income from them, then, then that's taxable. Got it. Thank okay, you. guys, we are getting a Zoom warning. We are past our time. And we're going to kick you out. Do you see anything last minute, Victor? Yeah, um, NGA, who is right next to Daryl there, was asking about how do you go from permanent residency to citizenship oh, okay. and dual citizenship in Panama? Well, it takes, uh, once you have five years of permanent residency, you can apply for a passport here. You're going to need to know some Spanish. Panama does not recognize dual citizenship unless it's by birth. So the gentleman uh, that was talking earlier has dual citizenship and that was probably by birth, so he's fine. But to give you a second citizenship, they're gonna ask you to renounce your first citizenship. Now, they only ask you to do that. Verbally. Yeah, verbally. There's no follow-up system. You don't have to sign your name. So do people do it? The ones I've talked to don't. But so you can apply after five years. It's not an easy procedure. It's not that expensive. It's about eighteen hundred dollars, I'm told, by my lawyer, and that includes some translation help. But it could take a year or two um, for, for the whole process. And you will be asked to renounce your current uh, passport. But like I say, I, I yet to meet someone who's actually done that. We're not going to no, sit here and advise if you. If you get dual citizenship, there's no. Um... There's, they won't do anything. And um, you know, if you never renounce your U.S. Yeah. passport, yeah. unless you want to be in, in, the, in, in unless you want to be in a, in a service public position. Yeah, unless you want to be um, a mayor, sure. a politician, yeah. or something, then you have then to you renounce problem. before you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we are ending the call. If Zoom doesn't end, if, if, if the call just ends, we weren't being rude, obviously. I never know when Zoom's going to end it. And usually I wait the last minute and then they do end it. So um, we have an hour and a half on this call. We've gone over by about three minutes. We really appreciate everyone coming. Oscar, say some Yeah, words. thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it and for the trust and for the interest. For those that have been in the call, they have been with us, uh, Jill, uh, ah, Lucy. <laughs> ah. We had Milton. Milton. We had Patrick. Minty. Patrick, why forgot about your name? I don't know. I think yeah. you got to send Patrick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys. thank you guys. We can't hear anyone. They're all dropping thank off. Thank you, I everybody. Kind of and off. we hope to see oh, you great. soon. Peace all right, guys. Have a great night. Talk later.